Hi everybody, today we will add a new part to our inventory. Here the le on the left side we see a couple of belt pouches that we want to add and we think about how to communicate with the client from that widget and vice versa. So let's demo it. We go taking one inventory. We get also a button all inventories automatically. We have here a hint that we at the moment show all inventories, so the, the content of all inventories in the middle grid. We run over through to our stone meadow here and collecting a lot of items. And yeah, you see um, that now we still are in all inventories, have a couple of items. And now we have the ability to switch between the buttons. And you see also here, the one button has 11 of 500, the other one also 11 of 500. So they are filled always the one with the least elements gets one. The moment I run over this meadow here, yeah, getting more and more and more. And yeah, just an easy way to add items, to show items. Another big question is how can I manage that? How can I generate the buttons automatically? How can I communicate with the server? For example, on the event, clicking one of the pouches and yeah, is still everything else working like sorting by name, by grade, by whatever. Looks good so far. And uh, here we want really to dive into what kind of UI components do we have here, the uniform grid panel, how are the buttons are created and how is the communication with the server organized so that I um, yeah, stay clear on everything important on the client side and the server is deciding all the things that are happening in your inventory. So yeah, still working here. And we added another belt pouch that is empty for the moment, as you see down in the in the blue box at the very beginning, uh, at the very top, sorry. <laughs> and um, let's have a look how that actually works. Yeah, looking here at the standard um, graphical view that we have here, let's go to the principles. The widgets are always client-based. They actually cannot broadcast anything to the server. They cannot replicate anything to the server. So we need a bridge component for the server logic. One thing, could be the player state. It's very often recommended. I would never do that because it will get you a huge player state with gigabytes of, of dependencies. What I expect is a better way to do it is an actor component because that is very switchable, very easy to remove, and you actually can do that dynamically. The actor component, the new one, will look at this HUD widget, the base widget for everything else. And from that base widget, we build up all the layers that we need in terms of widgets. So we have a couple of components that are only on the server, that is the inventory manager here. We have a couple of components that are server and client, so they talk with both words. And these are the actor components that we use here and only the actor components. Everything else needs to be on the client side, so all the, the graphical widgets, and they have to stay on the client side and only can use one of the actor components tunneling through with information that the server needs. So the one thing that is actually bridging that is this graphical actor component, as I call it. And the, because it's a game feature, it's very easy to configure. You really just go to this config table in your plugin. You can select that this should be dynamically added to your third party uh, character, for example, and will be added on starting the game. So very easy, very configurable, and you can always change that out to something else that you need. So game feature. The other thing is um, all the widgets here, they are built on top of each other. So we have this graphical component that communicates with the client side. Widgets are only on the client side and the base widget is this hat widget. This had a, has a lot of childs and these childs go down, for example, until we end up with such a button that then calls something. So we have this clear parent-child hierarchy and we have all the communication really funneled through one single component and we have still the possibility to use the gameplay message system to broadcast information, broadcast things on the server and on the client side where others can listen to. So this kind of um, yeah, subscriber, uh, subscriber and publisher pattern. The button itself is from the common button base. That is a blueprint that you have to derive on if you want to do anything with buttons. And it will always look at its root, the root being here, the BA hut, and calls whatever function there on it that we are implemented in an interface. If we go to this BI hut on initialize, we see it's an 
yeah, we saw it in the designer, it's just a canvas really. And this canvas will be filled on initialize um, with different widgets that are our game layers. Zero was the background information. One was things like a portrait, for example, or a life bar. The two was the game elements like the inventory and the three are question books. So we just initialize them really. We put the visibility on it. We define if the visibility depends on other layers. We add it as a child to the canvas and then we can position it with anchors. The anchor positioning, that is something that you can uh, yeah, test drive actually in the designer, that's a bit easier. So going back to the designer at the moment, it's just the canvas because we fill it programmatically. And now we just take one of the, uh, the no layer, we take one of the layers widgets that I created and test drive it and see how the anchor position would actually be. So just clicking on it, you see it's on the top left corner at the moment. Now I can anchor it wherever I want. If I press control and click on one of them, the position will be automatic, automatically updated. And then you can really out, read out the anchor position X and Y here, remembering it and putting it then into your um, code, into your graph. So let's play around anchoring it at the top, at the bottom, down there. Here in this case, it's kind of belonging to the middle. Um, but here you have an easy way to play around with it and then delete it back again. We remembered the values of the anchor and we can put them into it in this make anchor um, struct. So that is, that's it more or less. Anchoring is a very easy and flexible way. Also uh, works quite well if you scale the window, for example. Uh, what you could also do is kind of doing it per pixel simply with this set position. That is another possibility. But then, of course, you have to care for um, resolution changes or, or window changes and stuff like that. So I find anchors a bit easier, but it depends on the widget element that you want to use. So on an initialize, we have all these elements, all these widgets, these layer widgets initialized. We have them, we made them a child of our main canvas and everything is pointing to this BI hut. Now let's go, let's jump into one of the widgets, the layer two, that was where the inventory in the map sits. Um, going a bit deeper, that is only the inventory part. Going to the left, that's the inventory left part. Yeah, we just go through the tree until we are at the very end. And the very end in this case is our uniform grid panel and a small text. Uniform grid panel, uh, yeah, it's uniforms, so meaning everything you add will make sure that it's added with the same distance between the widgets. So you don't have to care for that. So we see at the, at the first pouch, two things are generated, the all inventories and the pouch. And they are starting here from the top. So um, both of them are simply initializing a button. And that button is then, yeah, is something that has certain functionality like creating or reacting to the on click event. First thing we do is clear the children. So everything that was there as a button um, is cleared at the very beginning. We also clear a map that has a reference to all the buttons that we create here. And this reference can be then used, for example, updating the style of the button or doing something on click with it. So first thing is really, if everything is updated, anything is updated, we update the the maps to the buttons and clear everything. Then we go through the, through the information here. We get this struct inventory exchange that we break up, for example, for the display names and the texture path. And here we create a button per struct that we get. The button itself, common button base, is quite simple. It's an image, a lazy image, and a text block. Both have their borders to make it easy to switch style out of it. Lazy image, I also uh, I already told about it, automatically loading images. Here the button has some very nice things to make it selectable, reactable, triggering input actions that we don't have implemented yet, but that is very important to make it reactable to either keyboard, mouse or a controller. Then we call on the buttons the initialize routine, that is something we created. So let's look at the button here 
on initialize should be somewhere. Yeah, and that is just setting a couple of parameters. The most interesting one, I think, is creating this soft object path out of a string that we actually do some find replace things uh, with a resolution. So now we, do, we really take a string and make it a soft object path that should point to a texture that is then to be loaded. And depending on the resolution of the texture, we choose different ones. Quite easy. And that is the var variable that will later be used to load the image there, the brush as it's called. Last thing, yeah, here we actually set the values. We have the path to the inventory that we then convert to the soft object. At the end, we add it to the grid and add it to our local map. So the uniform grid panel that will then host all the buttons. It will start at the top and will make sure independent how many buttons I add, it will always be the same distance in between, so I don't have to care for that actually. So there are other events like this on focus received, not implemented that yet. Um, there are actually quite a lot of events in this button, button base that you can use to make the buttons something that reacts to the user inputs. On construct here, for a thing, we take the soft object that we receive to check if it's actually a valid soft object reference and if it's valid we set a brush here for the lazy display asset lazy display asset this lazy image that is something i told it that you can use to automatically load the picture and unload it automatically without you doing anything on click obviously we want to make sure that the clicked inventory is the one that is active and visible what we essentially do we look at a certain um through the whole tree of our parent-child relations in the widget, we look for a certain class, and that is the class of this BA hut. So that is our root class for every widget that is out there. And we know that this class should implement a certain interface, and here we can call um, a routine from that interface. In this regard, set active directory. You see that's this interface widget to server communication, and this will collect all the functionalities that widgets on the client side can call on the parent widget and the parent widget then will communicate with the actor component and the actor component will communicate with the server if it's needed. Not always um, something, things are cosmetical, you don't need the server, but for most cases you will. So let's go to the BI hat and have a look what this interface function, this set active inventory, what it actually does. It's just a funnel, so meaning um, what it does, it puts the information, it puts the routine to the next component being the actor component. Meaning both the hut and the actor component are implementing the very same interface because they need the same function here. You, sh you see with that in theory, I could actually put them into one component that is possible. I like to decouple it as much as possible to have the logic and everything graphical really decoupled that makes it a bit easier. and maybe give less surface for attacks later. So yeah, same thing here. The hut is looking at a reference in this regard, the component reference, that is our BA UI graphical component. And it knows that this is somewhere here available. That is our main component that hosts all the logic and does all the communication with the higher level components this being the inventory component and the um, yeah, inventory manager. Same thing here. Now we are at the actor component. It again implements the active directory. So also same interface really. And this is actually doing something. So this will broadcast the inventory change to everybody listen. Yeah, we have this, we use this um, broadcast system that was introduced with the LiDAR and that essentially is a very easy um, publisher subscriber pattern. We could also use things like um, dispatchers, for example, if you have more an observer pattern, both are absolutely possible. And here we have the advantage, as we showed, that this component is on the client and on the server. So this is actually something that can bridge this divide. Otherwise, you will never be able to talk with the server from a widget point of view. So broadcasting it, we have the information in place. And now we hope that the information comes back 
and updates the thing as we need it. Um, then we see the graphical buttons. We can do something on select, for example. We can um, actually react to a lot of things. If you look at the button base here, you have a dozen or so of, of routines that you can override. So the button being the main interface that your user will act on um, is extremely valuable and, and, and can do really a lot of things with it to be implemented. <laughs> So, yeah, that is what we have now. So we can run as often as we want. We get a lot of pouches. We definitely have to think about the resolution here. Um, we are very fast loading it with whatever um, items we, we have here. And we still can filter it here around and sort it, delete it, drop it. So that is all possible. What is missing definitely is on the right side something like a detail view that is totally missing. And that is definitely something we will do. I hope that was something interesting and see you soon. Bye.